The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Hello, hello, Vladi. How's it going? Vladi, what's up, man? Chilling. Always. (laughs) Despite despite what's going on in in crypto price land? Well, I mean, it's it's really not that surprising. We're not quite broken, like completely broken down yet. Depends on which chart you want to look at. Bitcoin's still kind of hanging out here in its little wedge formation. Um, I put out a warning on, I think it was Tuesday on Twitter. I said, hey, uh, you know, just be careful. It's time to start thinking in protection mode. So uh, I did see that. I did see that. So, yeah, yeah you got to follow body, guys, if you, if you want to move your money around fast enough. <laughs> I mean, I've been pretty divided over the past, let's just say, two weeks now. Like, okay, we, we, we came up here. Things, you know, I, I was kind of hoping we'd break a little bit higher up than we did. And then crypto just diverged downwards from stocks. Stocks have kept going up. Crypto's just been going down, down, down. Um, and then with the news, you know, with the SEC just deciding to sue everyone and their grandma, uh, you know, people have been kind of nervous. Yeah, I mean, it looks like it took another big hit recently in the last 24 hours, right? So was there was there more negative news that I'm not aware? I mean, obviously, I know there was the, the delistings uh, and then, yeah, the SEC went after Binance and then just was it this it was this week, right? It was early this week when they announced that they're going after Coinbase, right? Yeah, I think it was um, like, was it Monday? I guess it was Monday. But I feel like another hammer dropped or I guess that was just that's just the price itself. The not not necessarily more bad news. So the first, I think the first bad news was they sued Binance and then they sued Coinbase. And then the, to me, the worst part is they, um, they're seeking an injunction against Binance to freeze all of their assets. Now, as much as I dislike CZ and the fraud and fakery that goes on there, freezing their assets is probably like the worst outcome for their victims. I mean, customers, um, (laughs) although if you still have funds on Binance after all this, like, uh, it's kind of your fault if your stuff gets frozen, right? Like um, you, you just shouldn't be on Binance. And there's been, I mean, after FTX and after all the exchange failures and all the bankruptcies of the past year, like if you're still holding funds on the exchange, if you lose them, it's probably your fault. I mean, we always get new people coming into crypto. So, you know, there, there could be people that just don't know. Um, but yeah, so it was that injunction. Binance is seeking, sorry, the SEC is seeking an injunction against Binance to freeze all of their assets. And this is Binance like, all Binance, not just Binance US. Um, Effectively, what they're saying is that CZ has been like the proxy administrator or proxy CEO of Binance US, and they've been slushing funds around and and a bunch of other stuff. So markets hate uncertainty. And that's what we have right now. We we really don't know how this is going to turn out. Um, I saw a good meme where you know, the um, the ballad of Buster Scruggs meme where the guy's got the rope around his neck, you know, he's like first time. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, was, it like had all the all the shit coins that were you know that were being delisted. Like, yeah, you know, Monero's here first time. Yeah, uh, although yeah, so- that movie does end with him actually getting hung. <laughs> so, wop, wop. Alert. <laughs> but you can't hang Monero, right? You can't kill it. You can't kill it. No, um, no. So I guess yeah, but BNB has probably been getting wrecked, right? I'm just looking at that right now. Yeah, actually, you know, let's, uh, let's yeah. take a look. Um, I, I, I can't share your charts. I don't know if you're sharing it on your end. Oh, so, okay. No. Uh, yeah, you're right. I, I was not sure. There we go. Share screen. Anybody who's listening on Spaces, obviously the best way to catch this is on YouTube, so you can see bodies, charts, and whatnot. There you go. Okay, there you go. I'm traveling. Or you can see the video on Twitter too, right? Don't we also stream it on Twitter as a video? See you? Yeah, it should be. Okay. Yeah. Now it should Wait. be. Is there? Yep, it's being streamed right now. I didn't know you could stream videos on Twitter. That's cool. Yeah, because we yeah, use so StreamYard, so it's very so easy. To, so it simultaneously so. streams on Twitter. Obviously, we have the spaces too, but then yeah, and on it's Twitch. Just... Yeah, for those that don't want to use YouTube, you can use Twitch, Twitter. But yeah, it's playing live on Twitter as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so right. technically, as of right now, so um, you know, I don't, I don't really have a whole lot of like, I don't know. I guess you could say I find myself a bit unprepared today, in the sense that I. I'm not going to be able to make any good predictions on where this market goes because um, it's like a wounded beast can still, like a wounded bull can still swipe up, right? Like this thing can still pump. Um, there's no reason it can't. But for me, I started exiting positions um, really the beginning of this week. I said after after everything that's happened, 
and it's just been down, down, down for crypto. I prefer to see setups that are significantly more, um, I don't know, just more clear. I, I like seeing more clarity on the market. To me, January was a very clear opportunity to get in the market, and it seemed very clear to just sort of ride it out. Um, at this point, like, okay, we, we could find a bottom. That could happen. Um, but at the same time, maybe we don't. It's really hard to say which one. So I, I would rather just kind of play it safe, lock my gains in, and then wait for a better setup. Um, but you can kind of see here with the Bitcoin chart, for example, this is really just a descending wedge. And these wedges tend to break to the upside. It's possible that we could see something like this happen and then come up here. Um, there are sort of slightly longer term problems in the sense that, um, so if we have, let's go to the weekly, this will be easier. So the thick white line is the, um, you know, kind of like the most shallow way that we could connect 2015 to the present action. And we basically broken down from that. On the shorter time frame, you can also see that um, this is kind of a bit of a, a slightly dubiously drawn line. Maybe, um, maybe we can go to Bitcoin plus ETH because I like this chart better. Um, yeah, so this line feels a little bit more uh, valid to me right there. Um, so anyway, it's just kind of a long way of saying that, you know, that it's the game isn't over like the it's it's not like it's doom and gloom here uh but there is significantly more risk in the market the other thing that i'm looking at that that i think is important to point out is um the nasdaq and the s p are coming up on some very important resistance levels so we talked about this guy and maybe it doesn't matter because we're like <laughs> crypto is just not being correlated to stocks for a while but um you know those correlations come and go Anyway, so we're looking here at a Bollinger Band, and this is the 500 period Bollinger Band. So that's, that would be the 500 day Bollinger Band. And the NASDAQ is basically starting to get within range of the top of that. Um, you could try and plug in a bunch of different numbers, like we could go down to 400. You'll see that that drops a little bit. We could try and go up to like maybe 700. Um, and you'll notice that 500 is about the highest that any Bollinger Band really goes for the NASDAQ. It's, it's like the top of the standard deviation. So Bollinger Bands, for those that don't know, are just standard deviation. So the orange line here would be the 500 moving average, and then the upper line would be the first standard deviation, and this would be the lower first standard deviation. You can change this, but to me it's arbitrary when you start saying, let's look at the two standard deviation or the three standard deviation. That's um, that, that's arbitrary. You're just doing an arbitrary multiplier, and I don't really like that. Um, so at any rate, the, the point is that from a, a statistical perspective, um, the moving standard deviations top out for the NASDAQ right around here. And we have kind of a similar story with, um, <clears throat> with the S&P 500 as well. Um, you can see that the S&P is basically reaching the top of that August pump that happened last year. So we're coming up against some pretty important resistance levels for the stock market as well. Um, so it, I am concerned about whether or not crypto needs to take is going to start sort of this big pullback that I've been expecting. Um, if y'all remember kind of at the end of last year, beginning of this year, I said, hey, we're looking to catch a big movement to the upside. It should be long lived. It should be sustained. And over the past weeks, I've, I've kind of been um, I've been suspicious over whether or not this thing could be over. Uh, largely, I was still holding just because it seems like, hey, you know, this area down here is a very likely candidate for an ultimate low of the bear market. Um, you know, and on long enough time frames, we should continue going up. Uh, obviously, we've got the um, uh, the regression analysis. You know, and we're kind of like sitting here in between these lines, but just just be aware that like if we come down and touch this line, like that's 31% down for Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin goes down that much, how much do some of these altcoins go down? Now, hypothetically, we could go up, you know, maybe try and get up above this line. If you remember last week, we were kind of comparing to uh, like the 2015, 2016 bear market um, or the end of the bear market where we kind of just like oscillated between that line. You'll, you'll notice here there was almost an entire year of just like flat movement, right? Like, um, I mean, relatively flat. Let's see here. What, what would that be? 43%, which for, for crypto for Bitcoin is, is actually pretty flat. So anyways, the point is that, um, you know, we can still be out of the bear market, but I mean, there's nothing saying that we couldn't just kind of slowly bleed out for a period of time until bouncing up. Um, it might take all the way until next year. So to me, it, it seems like the biggest gains, that there's a good chance that the biggest gains, at least for now, are kind of um, have come and gone. 
and that we might be in like a sort of stagnant market for, for a period of time. So that's just something that you'll need to be prepared for if you're going to hodl. Um, like I said, we, we haven't fully broken everything down on the larger trend here, at least, um, you know, on the weeks to months long time frame, which is this, uh, this descending wedge. There's the possibility it could break out. If it does, um, I'm probably looking at opportunities to exit if it does. One thing that I'm seeing out there a bit more, I'm actually seeing more uh, bullishness. I'm seeing people that have been kind of hesitant. They're starting to be like, oh, yeah, you know, it's time to get in. You know, oh, this is just FUD, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm going to get in the market now. And I'm seeing a little bit more of that. So, uh, you know, that's a small point. Again, you don't want to trade off of social sentiment. That's typically a bad thing to do unless you're like have access to loads of information and you're data processing it. You know, like this guy named Cliff Hyde did that in 2017, 2018. Um, it was pretty clever what he did. And he was able to call a whole bunch of shit coins before each one would pump up because he would like, he had bots that would just crawl these forums. Like he would call, he would go into a gardening forum and his bots with full information. And he would just be looking for mentions of like altcoins and stuff. Probably that's not so good anymore because, um, you know, you've got bots putting out information for altcoins. You've got all the shills out there and their shill bots and their shill bot armies. So it's probably not as reliable, but back then it was actually really cool. Um, okay, we're looking at Bitcoin dominance right here. Uh, we can see Bitcoin dominance has now made a break to the upside. These lines right here, 52, 50%, I've, you know, on a long term basis, I really have expected that we should, at least the, the technicals would say, the, the technicals on this chart would indicate that we should be coming up to these levels. Um, so like the 52% level. There's, um, again, there's kind of like Bollinger Bands up there, right, statistical levels. But you can also see just um, this was important for uh, for Bitcoin dominance back in the last bear market, 2018, 2019. Um, also another kind of important area. Really, this whole area right here is important for obvious reasons, that sort of horizontal areas of significance. So we're kind of in that now. Um, it wouldn't be surprising to watch Bitcoin uh, pounce a little bit more. We've seen the Bitcoin Ethereum ratio has taken a bit of, uh, of a dip here overnight, basically. So Ethereum on long term basis, I think, is going to continue going up. The, the chart is strong. The fundamentals are there. Um, so it, we're, the Ethereum Bitcoin ratio is basically trying to like break out of this one last spot right there. So it hit some resistance. It's fallen back down. I would expect this to maybe do something like that and then come back to the upside. It could do it tomorrow. It, it could do it next month. We, we don't really know exactly, but ultimately this chart looks like that should go up. Um, let's take a look at Monero. I, I didn't want to go to Monero because I'm really sad about, about this wick down here, about this last candle. So we have like this support, this um, very long support going back all the way to uh, that would be 2016. And so it looks like, okay, you know, can we break out of this resistance? Um, it looks like we were gonna, and then it just, I don't know what happened. It just went down. I, I don't have any good explanations for why we wouldn't have, because this line right here, that line didn't even, that wasn't even a factor until um, we kind of got this this extra capping action, right? So that was, this was the connection point. This was the connection point. This back here earlier was, again, another obvious connection point. And so you think right here, once you break that, you kind of expect to make your way up. And we just, that didn't happen. So I don't know what's going on there, why that's not happening. Um, I would like to tell myself that, um, you know, that the the DDoS against Tor that's been ongoing and Darknets, maybe that's a factor, right? We just haven't had that extra strength that we normally would have had. Um, it, it's really hard to say. Um, for me personally, I don't understand a fundamental reason why we should break down like this. Um, we, uh, in terms of like the ratio to Bitcoin, we're, we're not doing so bad. Like, obviously, we're not up here where we were. Um, there was this massive wick down. Like, it's just, and I don't know, that that's that's a really weird wick to me. I, that, that just, I, I don't see why that should happen, especially on a Saturday night. Like, who's trading and selling Monero to that extent on a Saturday night? Um, yeah, obviously, I want to say insiders, but uh, there could be a lot of factors, right? There's bots and stuff as well. Uh, but the point is that we've kind of broken this down right here. And uh, I mean, <laughs> do these lines actually mean anything, right? We we broke this and we didn't go to the upside. So we broke this down. Maybe we don't go to the downside now. Um, it does seem to me like there was pretty massive support here at these areas. Um, it seemed like even in the, the worst of the bear market, Monero like, just couldn't get any lower than that. So um I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, I'm just going to hodl. That's basically what I do with Monero. It's the only coin that I truly hodl. 
Um, I just think that, you know, it, Monero overall just deserves that. Um, plus, there's the factor of sometimes you really do need digital freedom money. So, uh, you know, um, always good to have some uh, on, the, on the plate there on the table. Um, let's see. One thing that we've seen with the divergences, which I don't know if I believe these anymore. Um, okay, so if we go to very long time frames, so this is a, a, a look back of about 5,000 time frames or 5,000 candles. We're on the five minute, right? So uh, this is something like, I think it's only like 10 days actually. But we have seen that um, Binance and KuCoin have just been massively accumulating, it looks like. Um, now, whether this is actually what's happening or they're just playing with these charts, these charts have started to make a lot less sense as of the past couple months. Almost seems like um, when I publish them is when they stopped kind of working. Uh, let's see, look back. Let's go to um, let's go to my 98 period. That's a much shorter time frame. Um, but the point is that we, we have seen, uh, and you can see this like for, for a while here, let's zoom out. You can see that that overall Binance and, and KuCoin again have been like in this very significant volume weighted uh, positive price divergence. And then, um, you know, as of last night, basically, they all went to the negative side here. And it's funny how that like just corresponds with that massive wick down that we had on the, uh, on the ratio. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we got that. Um, Overall, again, like just be careful, guys. Now is not the time to be taking huge risks. Could we go up? Yes. Are there going to be individual coins which pump? Yeah, almost certainly. Um, but I mean, if you have gains here, in my mind, you want to try to be locking in some of those gains. Um, yeah, you could miss out on on some of the future action, but um, I personally like trading setups that are clear, that are long term, um, higher likelihood. And right now, it just doesn't seem to be that time. Um, maybe we can end with a little bit of a positive note by comparing Monero to some of the other uh, proof of work. Maybe not all proof of work, but some of the other um, OG monetary use case coins. All right, so we've got, uh, this is the monthly chart. So Monero's still doing really good versus Bcash. I don't mean that as a pejorative. Sorry, guys, don't, don't get angry. Uh, this is Monero versus Litecoin. Kind of like this weird channel. I've never actually seen a chart with this kind of uh, this kind of pattern, you know, where it's like wah, 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 and then it just like does this channel. But it is an upward channel. Um, Monero versus Dash, you know, still looking good. Kind of like this upward triangle here. Uh, maybe we'll just break to the top side one day. Who knows? Uh, see, the only one uh, Zcash, we're just crushing Zcash. Like they, like they're not even a player anymore. They're they're not a contender. Their blockchain is full of um, of spam. And then the R blockchain is all, which is just a code fork of Zcash. Uh, it is also starting to spam up as well. Um, and there are people that would say, oh, well, now our, our anonymity set is so much higher. It's like, yeah, but um, if, you're, if your blockchain is going to be terabytes from people that aren't actually using it, they're just spamming it, like, does that make it? It's not really viable. Uh, we won't get into that too much. Maybe Deepin has something to say about that. Uh, but at any rate, um, we're doing pretty good against Zcash, and this should be expected to be continued. No one really uses Zcash. Uh, and then Stellar, I, I don't know, I guess Stellar is only relevant because Ripples is relevant and they like kind of a copy, but we're on the positive side of Stellar. The only coin that we're really, um, that we're really not on the positive side of here is, uh, is Ripple. And this is a bit, sorry, go ahead. That's crazy. Well, it, it seems crazy, but here's the thing. If Monero has already gone through like delisting problems, you know, or like first time, <laughs> um, Ripple is in the same situation. They've been being attacked by the SEC for the last two years. Um, they probably had a muted bull market um, because of the SEC. And they might actually get clarity before anybody else does. Um, it's possible that the judge could issue summary judgment or they could settle. Um, they're much closer to going to their trial. So if some, like if Ripple settles and they don't get like, I don't know, a, a life destroying fine you know like i mean they got billions and billions of dollars so if they get a slap on the wrist fine even if it's like two billion dollars or something like eos got which i think was like four billion um they'll and they survive as a company um then ripple the token is very likely going to pump so that might be a counterplay for you dgens out there you know to watch the ripple case but we've been watching the ripple case for like i don't know <laughs> six to twelve months here and we still haven't had any resolution but ripple has already like gone through all of this sec problem so they're ahead of the curve they might actually be able to pump um ahead of everything else so i'm not saying to go buy ripple right now but you know there, there might be an opportunity there 
like so one one way one strategy that i think is okay i'm going to get out of the market maybe i'll go make a very small leveraged play with a very minority of my stack on ripple um and then okay if it doesn't pump if it crashes okay then whatever i write that off but if it does pump um or it has the opportunity to pump while the rest of the market is crashing um you know that could keep you at even and or if i'm wrong and the market decides to go up anyways um i mean i say wrong i'm not calling for a big crash here but you know, if I don't want to miss out on the pump without risking a whole bunch, you can put a small leverage play on a coin like Ripple and then just let it sit. And if it pumps, if the market pumps, Ripple will go up with it and you'll still be in on some of those gains. So that's one way. That's one strategy you might think about um, if you're a, a trader or degen. Um, you know, but uh, honestly, like, hey, the Bitcoin maximalist gave us a lowest common denominator strategy against our own irresponsibility. So... <laughs> Uh, you know, like you just hodl that way you can't go uh, losing all your money to, to yield chasing and shitcoin chasing. Uh, but if you did want to do a little bit of trading, that's one strategy. You might use. So um, I guess that's about all I got for you guys today. Any questions? No, man. No. So that's, that's interesting. Ripple. I mean, isn't, isn't Ripple like represent kind of like the scammiest of all, all crypto? Well, what's your, what's your overall take on Ripple? Well, they're 100% pre-mined, and to me, they have a lot of false advertisement. Um, they, uh, you know, they, they got out there and they said, oh, we're going to be the banker coin, and the bankers, you know, we designed to be used with the banks. But, like, are the banks really going to turn Jed McCaleb and whoever the other guy is into, like, the new Illuminati trillionaires, you know, by adopting Ripple? Or are they just going to steal their code for their own CBDCs, right? Like, it, it's like they just, they knew what they were doing. It's false advertisement. It's just BS. Were they a security? I don't know. I think probably kind of, but that's also stupid scribble laws that I don't care about. Like I, I care about fraud. I care about hurting people. I don't care about like the, the dumb laws that some psychopaths wrote down on paper. Um, they, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the scammies because they didn't lie. Like it's a hundred percent pre mine and they didn't lie about what they were doing. Um, they just lied about, you know, their partnerships and, and uh, you know, like their, their posturing, but, it's kind of like all cryptos, so I guess I don't consider them necessarily that much worse than anyone. Mm. So that, that that's an interesting take, though, like because because they're they're the canary in the coal mine with the SEC stuff, right? So we're gonna see the SEC's interpretation of these coins first with with Ripple, is what you're thinking? Yeah, um, it does seem to me like the SEC has fumbled this case in a number of ways. Uh, At the same time they the sec has basically almost never lost a trial so it's it's really hard to know what's going to come of that i don't think it'll be a clear-cut victory for either one and no matter what judge torres rules there's going to be an appeal so um, i mean this thing could still drag out for a long time i do think that the name of the game when it comes to the sec is to try to keep everything in this arbitrary mm -hmm. unknown area where they can kind of like go attack people however they want. There's no real rulings in courts. The only ones that they've taken to court are ones that they've had victories for. And they're trying to use the courts as a method of um, setting in stone their regulations. So like they'll try and take a very clear cut case um, to, to court if they can. And then they'll, um, they'll say, oh, we have precedent for this now. And it'll be like a really, uh, I'm not, be, I'm being very vague here. I'm sorry, but it'll be like some some really bad case of like one sort of particular thing, but then it will look like it applies to a bunch of other stuff. And so they don't have to actually go to Congress. They don't have to actually issue um, regulations or guidance or um, rulemaking like in the SEC's framework. All they have to do is go to court and then, um, you know, set some kind of precedent and then, and then bandy that around from now on. Um, it, it's in bad faith. It's completely against what they're supposed to do. Yes, these are shit coins. Most of them are just like bullshit. Um, most of them are not going to do anything good for the world, but it, it's like, if you're going to press me up against the wall and say, would you rather deal with kind of like this, this land of um, corporate dickheads that are, that are frauding people, whatever, or would you rather create a monolithic entity out of the government that can then attack even the good projects so that the good ones can't rise? Um, I'll take, I'll take the fraud if I have to choose between the two, because at least, at least the good projects can still kind of stick around and not just get totally crushed by the, by the government. That's just like my personal view on things. So. What, what do you think of the the cryptos that were named as securities? I mean, it seems I haven't been following it closely. I mean, a lot of these cryptos I don't I don't even know. But 
the list doesn't seem completely comprehensive. Like, why did they choose the ones they chose, right? And obviously, like Ethereum, right, is is not mentioned. I mean, it's kind of the ultimate example of what all this stuff is, right? It was the first. It was really the first crypto to, to, to essentially, uh, you know, if we're going to label anything as security, I feel like Ethereum was like the the first one to do it. Right. Um, it's, so Ripple actually predates it. Offering and all, all that stuff. Yeah, R Ripple predates it. Um, but w with this with this recent onslaught uh, of, of the SEC against all these cryptos, all these ones that were named and they leave out Ethereum. I just I don't know. I haven't been following so, it closely enough. But what, what, any have, any reasoning as to why they left Ethereum out? My guess, and I haven't really looked. I haven't dug that deep into it. Um, my guess is that. They probably selected coins that they could hold up in court as being securities today. So Ethereum, so there's a difference between selling something as an investment contract and then the secondary trading of that on the market. So the token ETH or the, the Ethereum as a token, as like an asset that you can buy and sell and trade or whatever, that's almost certainly not security at this point. Um, but it is possible that Ethereum, in fact, it's almost certain that Ethereum did sell investment contracts um probably to u.s citizens um so the right. SEC it was, probably and it was listed on coinbase in the early days right so like it's not like statute of limitation you know what i'm saying like there's there'd still be so they uh, could go after like the ethereum foundation in that case to say hey you sold or, unregistered or, investment contracts to u.s citizens but they wouldn't be able i extremely doubt they'll be able to go into a court and then say hey ethereum as a network ethereum as a token right now is a security they probably selected tokens that they could hold up in court and say, no, 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 this is currently right now an investment contract. Like these are these tokens are securities at this moment. Right, right. That makes sense. And Ethereum, not well. I don't, I don't know. You, you think it, you think it's extremely clear that I mean, if if they're labeling these things as securities, Ethereum uh, completely dodges that bullet. Or like, uh, how about Zcash? I mean, they they have a corporation. They have uh, they had the founders, essentially the founders reward. Um, what, what do you what's your take on that? So um, securities laws are all about investment contracts, and to say that, for example, Zcash, that if I were to purchase Zcash, that that amounts to a contract with Zuku or with the Electric Coin Company or the Zcash Foundation. Man, you'd have a really hard time proving that. Like, there was there was no meeting of the minds. There was no um, uh, consideration, right? Like, uh, it, it, that would just be really hard to, um, I think, to to prove in a court that that that's actually like a contract between myself and Suku. These secondary market sales, like, um, I, I don't know. I just don't. I don't. I, I see a reasonable doubt being raised. I see a lot of potential to um, to counter that. The, the SEC's best vector here is probably to say, no, no, you your original sale, like the pre-sale of the token, the, the pre-mine, all that stuff, whatever, that was the investment contract. The people you sold to there, you made a direct deal with. They came to your website. You told them you were going to build this thing. Um, you gave them a token that represented you know an ownership stake in that thing. That could be done, um, but I, I just don't think they'll be able to prove that, that these are currently investment contracts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go deeper down that rabbit hole with, with somebody we get on the show. But it, it seems kind of arbitrary with the coins that they were picking and the ones they were leaving out. Um, yeah, it probably was arbitrary. They, I mean, they have a lot of motivations, right? They might have tried to find the, the lowest hanging fruit. They might have tried to find the ones that um, they feel are the most attackable, uh, the, maybe the ones they can get the most money from. Right? <laughs> They've got a bunch of different motivations there. Right, right. It might be cool. Like, I don't know if we know any lawyers, but um, it would be cool to see a debate between two lawyers, one that would, like, take the SEC side, like, hey, all of these are securities, et cetera, and then for someone to take the other side, you know, and, like, have a debate. That would be pretty cool to see. Yeah, that'd be amazing. All right, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Another week of... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> As we go further down in price... <laughs> I mean, well, let's let's keep it in perspective. You know, I mean, we're still still up pretty good. Yeah. We're still up way way more since like January. 
you guys yeah. staying positive. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold your Monero, use your Monero. Uh, don't value it in terms of fiat. Exactly. <laughs> All right, man. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see Thanks, you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.